Hey guys, welcome back to Pete's Garage. Well, I need to clarify something I said in my last video, I was at the last video about uh, fuel injection systems. If you haven't seen the video, you can click on this little bubble here, and this bubble will take you to that video, and you can watch the video about fuel injection. But I made a statement when I was making that video about why I put the fuel regulator where I did, the fuel pump, etc., and I talked about vapor lock. And I, my, my statement was incomplete. I didn't really fully explain what I was talking about, and I didn't think, well, I should, you guys are really sharp, so I should have expected it. You guys really jumped on that and, and tried to clarify the difference between vapor lock and hydro lock or hydrostatic lock. And there is a difference, and I want to explain it to you because it really is important, and I want to share the difference between a fuel injection system and a regular uh, mechanical pump that you might have in a, a regular engine with the mechanical pump and carburetor. Now, first, vapor lock. Vapor lock is exactly what it sounds like. Vapor. There's a fuel vapor. The fuel vapor comes from gasoline boiling in the fuel system, in the fuel line. Now, the fuel line can be before the fuel pump, it can be after the fuel pump, it all depends on where the heat's coming from, and it doesn't take that much heat to boil gasoline. Now, depending on your altitude, where you're located, gasoline can burn from 100 to 400 degrees, and obviously more, but 100 to 400 degrees is the range and gasoline will boil. When it boils, it turns into a vapor which expands rapidly. Okay, When that expansion happens, it causes a pressure bubble in the fuel line and fuel cannot continue to flow. And if fuel can, can't continue to flow or can't get past that, the upstream or, or downstream to the carburetor or the fuel injection system will not have fuel and the engine will stumble and lose power. So if your fuel boils in your fuel system before the fuel pump, the fuel pump will cavitate and uh, the air will try to, since the fuel pump does not pump air, it pumps liquid, it'll cavitate, it'll try and pump something, but it can't because there's gas in there or the vapor, and you, consequently it won't pump gasoline to the engine and it'll suffer. So your, your performance, will, the engine will die, the performance will suffer, and it could eventually just stop. The engine will quit because of uh, the, the vapor lock. If it's after the fuel pump, the same thing will happen. After the fuel pump, now if you have a carburetor, after the fuel pump, if you get an air bubble in there, a little vapor lock in there, and, and the vapor goes up, at least you have fuel in the bowl of the carburetor, and that fuel will get used up before the air bubble gets there, it'll get into the carburetor, it'll eventually vent out, and then the engine could, will we'll probably keep running, but if the vapor lock is big enough, it could stop the engine from running. So, the vapor lock, before or after the fuel pump is will cause different things okay now in a fuel injection system it's a little different a fuel injection system the fuel is under pressure all the time and it's at pressure right up to the injector so if I have let's say a vapor lock in the in the line for a fuel injection system and there's a vapor there the since the fuel injection system is closed loop with feedback from O2 sensors and all kinds of things like that once the if vapor gets into the fuel rail and you're pumping fuel vapor into the cylinder instead of gasoline, the, the, obviously the injector is going to be working incorrectly. It's going to, still going to open, but fuel isn't going to be flowing through. It's going to be a vapor. The vapor will get in the cylinder. It won't burn completely. The O2 sensor is going to pick up that it thinks the engine's lean. So the computer for the car or computer for the engine is going to richen the mixture and pour more fuel in, causing more pressure potentially leading to a higher pressure in a cylinder and depending on the engine the vapor and the pressure in the cylinder can be too great and it can make the engine stall and eventually ruin the engine so the vapor does it but in order to explain that let's look at a mechanical fuel pump and a fuel injection system and we'll talk about the difference between the, the fuel and the vapor lock the hydro lock that comes later we'll talk about hydro lock as I'm going through the, the two different systems now here we have the regular mechanical fuel pump Mechanical fuel pump pumping up the fuel line comes up in front of the engine goes over here and goes to the carburetor right here Okay now Down here where the fuel line would come in the fuel line would come back here and if you can picture this if the, the picture that the Engine is in a vehicle this fuel line is right here It's it's coming going back to the back to the fuel tank, and it's really close to this exhaust manifold It's it's fairly reasonable to see how being close to a exhaust manifold that could get you know a few hundred degrees, uh, seven, eight hundred degrees maybe, uh, depending on the engine, that could heat up the fuel line, cause vapor, 
caused the fuel to boil. Now I got vapor in the fuel line. It's coming up to the fuel pump here. The, the vapor gets in the fuel pump. And the, the, now the fuel pump is simply a diaphragm trying to pump gasoline. There's air in there. It cavitates. Now we have no fuel that will go here. And eventually when we get to the carburetor, the air will go into the, one of the bowls on each side of the carburetor. And when it gets there, it will eventually come out through the vent tubes. There's two vent tubes, so the, engine, the air will come out through the vent tubes and the car could potentially keep running. Now, if the vapor lock continues, if you get vapor lock in the line after, and so let's say you got vapor lock somewhere here, it's going to cut off the flow. And if that gets stuck, if the vapor gets stuck there and there's enough pressure to hold it there, then, of course, the carburetor will starve and you'll run out of fuel. That is what happens in a carbureted system. So you get vapor lock in the carburetor. Okay? Vapor lock in a fuel line, vapor lock towards the carburetor can happen. So let's go look at the fuel injection and see the now difference. Now on the fuel injection engine, we have the fuel line coming in, and this would go down to wherever on the firewall uh, the fuel line is coming in. And you want to keep this obviously uh, far away from your headers. From here, you have your headers right here. This could heat up. Uh, so here's the fuel line coming in. Now, if you have your fuel line and, and the fuel pump is in the gas tank, obviously you're not going to boil the fuel way back in the fuel tank where the fuel pump is. So if you have your fuel pump midstream, still it's going to be under the vehicle and you're really not going to get vapor lock from that. But in a fuel injection system, it is possible and it's reasonable to consider on the engine here, this is where I installed the fuel injection system in the last video. If this were to heat up, if this fuel line were to heat up, if the fuel rail were to heat up for some reason, and remember, 100 to 400 degrees, it can get pretty hot in here. If you were in a real hot day, the engine heated up, something happened, you got, and then you got vapor lock, it can happen, right? So, imagine this. I, got, I get vapor lock somehow. I get, the fuel starts boiling in my fuel line. The vapor comes up here, and it's going to start to collect in the, in the beginning part of the fuel rail right here, okay? And if there's an air bubble here, when this injector opens, this injector is going to open and all it's going to be pumping in there is fuel vapor. Not only is it fuel vapor, it's hot fuel vapor and is expanding. So as the vapor starts to form, it's expanding quickly, it's like gas, it expands very fast and it's going to go in the cylinder and if it's at the wrong time it can increase the cylinder pressure and cause the engine to stall, fail, you're going to get performance losses, etc. And what can happen then is your plug can fail. So let's say the plug fails, so you're not getting spark. You're not going to get spark, but this, this uh, injector is still going to open, and eventually the bubble will pass, go through the system, and in this system it'll go through, it could return, so the pressure can dump, and it'll and eventually work its way out. But this, in, in a very short period of time, as the engine is running, so the spark, now we have the cylinder, let's say the cylinder is not firing anymore, and we still have fuel going to this uh, injector. This injector is going to keep pumping gasoline into the cylinder. And then we get into a situation where you're going to have hydrolock or hydrostatic lock. Hydrolock is simply when the volume of liquid in the cylinder is greater than the volume at top dead center. So if you have a uh, clearance or cylinder head volume of 58 cc's and this thing pumps and you get more than 58 cc's of gasoline in there it's going to vapor lock because the, the liquid is non-compressible it's going to get up and it's going to bang it's going to stop instantly that's what causes uh, the uh, hydrolock the hydrolock is the liquid in the cylinder causing the engine to seize now the liquid could be anything it could be gasoline it could be uh, it could be liquid or a coolant from a blown head gasket. So you could have a leaky head gasket. The coolant is going to get in there. And if you shut the engine off, the coolant leaks into the cylinder. You go to start it up. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you can't, it won't even turn over because there's too much liquid in there. You, the engine hydrolocks, and you could ruin, you're going to ruin the engine. You could bend a valve. You could bend, there's a lot of things that can happen. So the, the, the thing to remember is that if you get vapor lock in your engine, vapor lock could lead to hydrolock. If you get hydrolock, hydrolock won't lead to vapor lock. So it's not a two-way street. If you get vapor lock, you could get hydrolock, or you could get hydrolock without vapor lock. So they're not interchangeable. They could be related, they could not be relatable. That's the difference between hydrolock and vapor lock. Vapor lock is the boiling of gasoline in the fuel system, causing an air pocket, a vapor pocket, that leads to the engine not getting fuel. In a carbureted engine, it could cause stalling or stoppage. In a fuel injection system, it'll lead to the 
injector, getting uh, vapor gas instead of liquid, the, the fuel management system, the computer, will start to think that the engine's running lean, so it will increase the fuel, and this injector will start pumping more gas, which will lead to a problem, which could eventually lead to the hydrolock situation. Now, when I made the video, I said that vapor lock could leave, vapor lock could seize the engine because the gas, boiling gas comes in the cylinder. You have expanding gas that goes in the cylinder and it could lock up the engine. Well, that is true, uh, but I didn't complete the statement and I left it kind of vague for the vapor lock and the hydro lock. Now, I want to leave you uh, with the thought that if you have either one of these situations, all you have to do is shut the engine off and let it set. If it's a, if it's a vapor lock, let it cool down. The vapor, the pressure will dissipate, and you can start the engine again. If it's hydro lock, that's a different situation. Whatever's in there, if it's gasoline, you can take a plug out. You take your plug out, let it vent out, let it evaporate, and then you can start it up. However, if it's coolant, you got a completely different problem. So that's the difference between vapor lock and hydro lock. So the one last thing I want to leave you with before I finish is I want to share something with you called cryogenic expansion, something else that can happen in fuel systems, specifically a fuel injection system. It's a, it's, it's a thermodynamic principle for all you mechanical engineers out there who study thermodynamics, and you may have had a class talking about thermodynamics, and something called the Joule-Thompson effect, or the Joule-Kelvin effect. And that's when you have a liquid, uh, a, a liquid that goes through an orifice, and when it rapidly expands, it cools. Uh, this will happen for all kinds of gases except for hydrogen, helium, and neon. Those are different, but for gasoline, if you, so if you have a propane engine, a natural gas engine, you could experience cryogenic expansion. Even if you have a gas grill, a propane grill or a gas grill, and you turn it on, you can freeze an orifice, and it could be 110 degrees outside, but you still see freezing. Um, you might notice that when you go by a, a industrial complex and you'll see a big nitrogen cylinder and there's ice on the outside of the cylinder outside on the valve and you see all this ice and you say how can there be ice on that thing when it's 100 degrees outside well it's from the Jules Thompson effect and I can demonstrate that very simply for you what I did was I went to Office Depot and I bought it's just a can of that cleaning duster you know when you you want to whoops don't want to do that uh, it's just a duster so when you want to clean off your electronics you buy this little duster and you can you got some compressed air there to clean off your electronics, right? Now, there's a liquid in here, right? And at room temperature, it's a liquid, and it's, it's warm. It's room temperature. It's not cold. But if I turn this upside down, and you can see the liquid coming out of there. You can see that vapor? It's extremely cold. And if you've had one of these bottles, you probably said, wow, that's really cold. That's from cryogenic expansion. And if I did it enough, if you can't see, if I took that liquid and I it on the surface, you can see there's ice. It's ice from the vapor in the air. It's very cold. And any water vapor that's around here condenses and it freezes. And it's extremely cold. It's so cold that if you actually spray this on your skin, you can get frostbite, you can kill your skin. It's very, very dangerous. And you don't really realize it. And if I just go like that, just for a couple seconds, that the plastic starts to freeze from the vapor in the air. So what does this have to do with, with fuel systems or, or vapor lock? If you have a fuel injection system and you have, obviously your fuel is going to be under pressure, you have a valve, which is your fuel injector, and it's going to dump from a, the, the liquid, the gasoline is going to pass under pressure through an orifice and it's going to expand into a cylinder. When that happens, it's going to cool down rapidly. Now there's a, a, a more specific reason for, for uh, thermodynamics and uh, quantum mechanics, why that happens, I'm not going to get into that, but I, I just wanted to demonstrate that for you. So if you have your fuel rail, it's room temperature, you just have it outside and you start your engine, what happens is the fuel cools down really quick. The cooling of that fuel right there is what also can lead to a vapor lock situation because as it expands, you freeze. And then as it freezes, the valve will stop pumping, the fuel sits there, uh, the, the valve will stop opening, will stop letting the fuel through, and then the fuel will sit there, and when it sits in one place, it can get hot, and that's when it starts to boil. So you have a situation where you have boiling fuel on one side and a frozen valve on the other side. That's what happened. Shelby just knocked over my thing there. So that's what can happen. So when you talk about vapor lock and hydro lock or hydrostatic lock, it's important to know what could cause it, where it could be, and how to eliminate that. I hope that cleared it up. I'm sorry I didn't uh, explain that completely in my last video. But I, I wanted to do that and share it with you just so I clear it up and we have a good understanding. And I appreciate all your comments and your very, very quick 
uh, text messages to let me know that I didn't complete that statement. It worked out really well. I appreciate all your stuff and all your comments, and thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.